Hey, what's up, guys? So, we're going to go back to talking about AEW over the past several months that I probably haven't even reviewed an episode of either Dan Brian Page or Dynamite, because I'm going to be honest, I've been bored with AEW. There's no headline. All I know is this job or Wheeler Utah that they just keep pushing down the fan base of throats. Their infatuation with trios matches, yet they don't have six-man tag belts. When they have probably the most overbloated roster to do so with the amount of factions they have that are already overstayed their welcome. No consensual storylines. Daniel Bryan and Dean Ambrose are a tag team right now. And Christian Cage, did they literally got over the back burner after the 2021 Royal Rumble, signed him over to get some of the talent over, and he's failed already to do that, just having mid-card matches already on Dark and Rampage. You know who else is doing that? Jeff Hardy. Matt Hardy. Nearly any of the congenial signings either don't get over organically, you just get another surprise debut up her ass, or just come up like, poof, they're just there. They're just there. AW, AEW has no rhyme or reason. They have no long-term planning. It's just, they're there. The fans want them. That's it. And you can see why I go off on AEW. Because just talent there, production, and people that actually want to make something out of nothing. But all there is is just pure nothing. Into something that they put way too much time in. Because you think Christian Cage, Billy Gunn, the Hardys would make it a more competent product. Like, oh my god, it has so many of these guys I already know. And I want to see these newer guys. Christian Cage doesn't do that. After, like, you literally had him in the main event feud with, with Kenny Omega just to be the sidewalk bearer for the CM Punk rivalry. And CM Punk, over that time period, is now challenging for the world title. With Hangman Adam Plage. Please drop the belt to Punk. I don't care. I'm not doing this out of fanfare. It's just because the Hangman sucks as a champion. And for the people that actually has positive things to say about AEW. They actually would rather see Punk than Adam Page. It's a statistical fact. He's not the reason why people want to watch TV. They're not the reason why they change in to watch Dynamite. They seem to see the probably the stupid tag tournament. The baddies. Or whatever the hell. Uh storyline with this Blackpool Fight Club bullshit faction that's just, oh, I thought, okay, it's an English faction. No, it's just, if you work stiff and you know William Regal, you're in the faction. That's the storyline. There's, there's no gap, there's no drama, there's like nothing to keep me ever emotionally there. If I'm ready, th if I already know, that means I should already know, like, it's so insider, it's sad. But that's out of me ranting for most of the show. I already wasted a lot of time. Christian Cage. Let's, let's just go over Christian Cage. Because I don't think he's wrestled since March 4th of 2022. Or been in a relevant storyline since the middle of the year. Of 2021. When he was feuding over Kenny Omega. And he dropped the Impact Wrestling. Ta uh, Impact Wrestling World title to him. Like. What? The first ever Rampage? Or that was the second ever Rampage? And. And you, you think somebody like that. A guy that can still go. Still in good shape. He's just there to promo coach Jungle Boy now. When it, on AEW. You know. The guy, the son of an actor that has stage fright, can't talk, has no charisma, has a borderline indie gimmick, can't get over organically except his own song, can't talk by himself without Christian Cage there. Luchasaurus sucks, I swear to God. Such a waste of his time. I I'm just saying, that it's just a waste of his time, bro. They bring all these veterans... To outwork everybody even though you barely show up to work. The irony of that entire bullshit storyline makes no sense to me. And I'm saying this because I like Christian. I thought he was an underrated part of the Edge and Christian tag team group. I thought he could have been a serviceable world champion. I thought it was unfair. I found it unfair back like literally after he won it at Extreme Rules. That he should have held it a bit longer instead of Randy just taking it from him all because he wasn't really a legitimate world champion.
even though the World Heavyweight title was already irrelevant at that point. Honestly. And just knowing, like, the still most relevant stuff he's ever done in his career was still on TNA, it, it just displays how sad, like... AEW has no long-term jeopardy when it comes to creating any storylines for their acquisition. They're just their match. Poof, that's it. That's how they structure their shit. And, and, and even, like, the, the way, like, some of these people haven't even been on live television, they're just going to influx more of this roster until most of their contracts die out like they did with Marco Kant. Probably with Brian Cage, Ethan Page, or not. They don't have a strategy. They're just there to put the super indie card there just for these guys to make probably more money than they deserve making. And you think, oh, DC, you're being harsh. Not everything has to be like, no one's explaining like this has to be like WWE. Somebody wants this to be a legitimate promotion. You gotta have legitimate people. And I don't know why Angelico's still here. Alan Angel's still here. The, uh, the, what, the third of the Jericho, the Jericho Appreciation Alliance bullshit faction. Brock Anderson. Why is Cole Cabana still here? All these guys that had, like, a fragmented part of the show. And they don't even change the atmosphere. And Christian Cage is still here. What, one of the major reasons why TNA even was a front runner, at least the second best promotion to hire? You'd think he would be more likely featured in storylines, the Hardys, either than just being there for probably a farewell tour. It's still nobody gets over. I, I just don't get it. So many guys Christian would be feuding with. But it's to just get guys that just can't get over by themselves. And he's still associated with them. Why the Jurassic Express? How does that even correspond with how he acts? We had the Christian coalition with personalities that shouldn't even mesh together with Christian, but it worked when he was at AJ Styles and Tyson Tomko, his former muscle back on to uh, back on Raw. And that chemistry worked because AJ, even though we know him as like an indie midget, even for back in the day. He could create his own character. He can be comedic relief. He can actually be an interesting person when you give him the time a day. You don't see that with anybody. Nobody acts like they're TV ready. And that's a sad thing. Jack Perry doesn't act TV ready. Majority of the OG roster. And then immediately they get released. Like probably what's going to happen to Joey Janela, Sonny Kiss, Brian Cage, Miro, MJF. All these guys, they could have been getting over organically without probably signing backwater a uh, WWE mid-carders that can't get over by themselves. I, I honestly don't know. And I think this roster is still going to grow because of it. Th and there's a way to still use the veteran talent aligning with the, the young talent in a more positive way. But I, I, I just, I can't see it. Because there's so much shit they messed up. And it's already gotten overblown. Seriously, you can make the show better by just letting it be 60 wrestlers. And you could still make a competent product. Like you got Samoa Joe, and they already have him consistently showing up on Rampage and Dynamite. Why? The Hardys, Why? Nobody wants to see. N nobody wants to see Jungle Boy, Matt Lee, more Chris Jericho segments. Like the more entertaining stuff I see is just Darby Allen, and that's it, and probably MJF. And just the format just sucks. And and it just Christian. Probably has no opinion to put on this because he would immediately get fired. He'll get fired. You know why? Because Tony Khan is such an alienating, disapproving pick that can't take constructive criticism, especially in his own business. That's not even that relevant. That got relegated to a 
a, a television channel, especially with the new buyout, you keeping your little super indie fed is going to die. And, and one of the things Tony Khan just never thinks of, he never feels like there should be a reason for people either than the AEW fans to watch. No other person needs to catch their eye on their product except the people that already watched. If you think that way as a businessman, just know you're probably in fucking bankruptcy by now. But, I don't know. I have never been financially supported by my father in my own endeavors. So, I don't know how to feel about that, technically. Because, I'm not Tony Khan. I go to the gym. Sometimes. Well, most of the time over the week. I socialize. I had action figures when I was a kid. And I don't mark out on indie jobbers that have too much of an ego over backstage when they barely could draw on their own right. So, I'm just saying. And, and just over all this time, you think Christian would be more open to criticism to how Tony Khan runs their business? Billy Gunn, Mark Henry, you know, men that's been there when wrestling was actually the most talked about thing other than the Super Bowl or the biggest soap opera. People were talking about Steve Austin coming back to Raw than a Sopranos episode. So you cannot discount hearing the opinions from guys that actually been there when wrestling was a major topic in pop culture. So I don't know why most people the most wrestlers are not taking that criticism. I don't know why Christian Cage hasn't even thought of really getting released from AEW. Just letting his contract expire. Either go back to doing his little thing with Edge on the network, or at least go back and make his little rip-off brood fed on Raw. Because at least that would be him doing something and using his talents with the time he has left to get guys that actually try to get on TV over. Because even though I hate Damian Priest, he has a presence, he looks like an adult, and he sort of looks imposing. Because he's over six foot, and he can beat your ass. Jack Perry looks like a Marco stunt used the 2K sliders and created his own character. The only thing positive about Jungle Boy is that he has a hot girlfriend. He can't even make a hates that. Because anybody that's a basic white male is not deserving of a push. That's it for me. Thanks for watching the DSC show.